I've been searching my whole life for the American version of the Von Trapp family singers, and I think I found it here in Juneau, Alaska. The Zahasky family, the Alaska String Band. Welcome to Next Stop, and wow, what sound do you guys put out? Let's start, let's start with you two. How did you guys meet? We met playing music. We had a common friend who asked us to play at a, a, a Christmas event, and uh, we played at that together, and then we started dating and fell in love shortly thereafter, and music has always been a part since day one. 1904, board the Princess May, took a due north on a trip for three days, search of wealth and the promise of gold, digging in the dirt only left me cold. It's work in my mind if you're willing to go, 2,000 feet down the shaft below, way down deep in the tread, well mine, working all day for three dollars and a dime. Girls, come on now. Is there any conflict? Of course there's conflict. How do you get through it when you're at rehearsal and you just like want to get at each other's throats? Yell a lot. <laughs> no. Yell. We have conflicts, but it usually they resolve. If we play, we, we end up feeling better after we play it. Bands that tour uh, without family, it's really hard on them. You know, to tour as a family is great. We get to spend time and go on adventures together. You know, I feel blessed because I get to work with my kids as they're maturing and, and, and train them into a professional skill. When you think of Sonoma Wines, you think of Sebastiani. This was one of the first vineyards in all of Sonoma County. You, you step into this amazing structure and, and it's just, you feel like you're in history. Uh, Sam Wiley Sebastiani used to drive this tank on the back of a wagon uh, up to the quarries to sell wine by the tin cup to the workers up there. About a nickel a cup back then. I love that. Actually, it's about a nickel a cup right now. It's yeah, more than a nickel come a, a long cup. way, baby. You've got a great tasting room. Yes, it's a beautiful uh, structure. Uh, it was the actual winemaking facility up until about 2000 when we remodeled and turned that into the tasting room. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful room with a lot of arches, uh, great for music. I drink that muddy water, I feel the deep inside. I knew Chicago had the blues, but I had no idea that Sonoma had the blues. Adam, you bring it, buddy. Well, thank you, man. Now, so I gotta much. ask you guys, because blues players don't dress like this. Did you guys get dressed up just for us tonight? Well, you know, it's kind of a new thing. I've been dressing up for my gigs a little bit lately. It wasn't you know? just for us? Come on. It wasn't just for you, I promise. The whole band looks good, man. Well, you know, I, I just told them what I was wearing, and I told them I just wanted them clean and covered, you know, and, and they, all did, they all listened to me for a change. That train is coming soon. It's carrying some hellhounds, hungry for some food. I know I've done some things that I knew were wrong, but I never robbed a poor man or drove him from his home. Before my 15th birthday, I'd stolen my first piece. I learned how to shoot straight, soon I had to leave. Took five silver dollars and I headed out one night on a horse as fast as lightning in that pale moonlight. We'll be playing in the devil's band tonight, singing songs and longing for the light. What's the music scene like here? You know, it's a small town and you'd be surprised how jumping the music scene is. There's a lot of good venues. There's a lot of uh, a lot of great players that you wouldn't expect to be in this small a town or this small an area. We'll be playing in the devil's band tonight. Singing songs and longing for the light. We'll be playing in the devil's band tonight.
For our local music segment, we're in Wailea at Mulligans on the Blue for award-winning music by Willie Kay. Irish-born publican Mike O'Dwyer brings Ireland to Maui here at Mulligan's. And a full Irish pub at that, it is with a, real Guinness. It, is this real Guinness? Straight it's from Dublin? Straight from St. James's Gate. Nice! Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the real thing. There's nothing like it. Real Irish pub with real Irish people drinking real Irish Guinness. What's it like to have a guy like Willie Kay perform here regularly? Um, to have a Hawaiian man playing Irish music in an Irish pub. My dad came here and he said he had to travel 8,000 miles to see somebody sing Danny Moy properly. So uh, and we're honored. This is kind of his home on Maui. Music is very important to the Hawaiian Islands and everywhere you go, everybody knows Willie Kay. And for good reason, your music is awesome. Thanks, hey, aloha brother, how you doing? Uh, aloha. And, um, how did you get started? How, how did it all begin for you? Brother, I've been born with it, you know. Parents uh, were musicians, and so everybody else who was born right after that was became great musicians. So did you sit around with the family and play growing up? And we still do that. That's awesome. We still do that. And you got your ohana with you tonight. You got a cute yes, little do. girl. We, 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 we try to, you know, make the atmosphere more family-like. Every day she works across the sea, bound for the high the town. At the end of the day, she returns to Molokai, to Molokai. You play amazing Hawaiian music, mm -hmm. but you rock out to other stuff. Yeah, I heard you do opera. Yeah, well, it, it's all part of the entertaining process. You give them everything you possibly can so that they remember you and love you and tell everybody else wherever they come from. She's my Molokai woman. treat for us at Next Stop. We get to have one of the most famous musicians in the entire Northwest, Michael Allen Harrison, on Next Stop. Michael, welcome to our show. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Well, let's talk about your music, because I've actually been following you from afar for a long time. Okay. You've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah, about 30 years I, since I you know, started being a professional musician for, since my first paying gig. Let's just, let's just say <laughs> that. Uh, but it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, you know, now that I'm uh, considered, you know, a statesman in the industry, in, in this territory, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm more involved in uh, working with kids, and I have a foundation called the Snowman Foundation. We raise money for music education, and so I spend more of my time there. But, uh, you know, my first love is playing the piano, and I, I love to do concerts. <laughs> music changed over the last three decades? Oh my gosh. Uh, I would have to say um, it has, I, I think I've stepped into just really being relaxed and present with it, you know, because, you know, as you grow as an artist, you 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 really start to let go of, of how you think you're being perceived by an audience. I'm just really stepping into the music and just really being myself. And I think what happens there 
is you discover that you're, you connect. the charts one of the best in the country and floater tonight absolutely rocked one of the best live music venues the wow. crystal ballroom okay. three oh, guys I don't know. three oh. guys bringing that kind of sound to the stage oh, your music because your new CD tonight we heard it's fantastic it's awesome everything you guys do is great oh, thank you wow uh, you know it's, it's it's pretty collaborative really I mean sometimes I'll come in with a whole song that I think is done and then these guys will play it and they'll go you know it would be better like this and then it is <laughs> and, uh, and then sometimes we don't have any we don't even have a starting point we just start kind of throwing ideas out of the stick and, and it, you know it's it's a uh, there's an element of like that. You know how when the chefs will just throw noodles at the wall? Sure. See what sticks. See yeah, what sticks. We, right. we do a lot of that like, <laughs> hey, that one works. Yeah. about Portland music because um, you know I think most viewers watching around the country right now are not probably really privy to Portland music scene this this is a thriving bumping music scene why Portland or it's crazy why do you crazy. think I mean what blows me away you go out on tour and you could be in a, in a city that is 12 million and there are fewer clubs to play than there are in a city like Portland that's exactly. two and you find yourself going, why are you six times larger in terms of population, but there's so little happening here, you know? And, and you come to Portland and there's this sort of bizarre, like, renaissance of, I mean, it's, it's incredible. <laughs>
For our live music segment, we're at Dave Navarro's and our new friend Nico's Black Door Bar and Grill for Terra Grace and the Magnetics. Too much smoke and junk, too fast. If I don't slow down, I might not last. We're very honored to have Terra Grace and the Magnetics here as our featured band on the Las Vegas show. So honored because this is old school Vegas. Old school Vegas rock and roll. It's not the strip, it's not the lounge singers. It's real rock and roll. And you got your start here a long time ago before this was all really blown up, didn't you? I did. I was a young teen when I first started singing. And uh, I've been here from the very dark ages of the rock the original rock scene and uh it's expanded and there's a lot more clubs that feature original music a lot more people have moved here there's just a lot more opportunity for the original artist Some ain't my friend today cause it's burning, burning my skin. I'm a junk what they do on the strip is more designed for uh, sheer entertainment for pleasing other people. I'm a little selfish in that regard, being an original artist and writing for myself with the band. There is a plus to it because we do consider ourselves pretty entertaining and we have a pretty big uh, fan base that through the years we've accumulated. Some things have changed, but I feel I'm the same. Lost my innocence. Tell us about your band, The Magnetics. The Magnetics, I've been through zillions of bands and band members, but I recently got together, I've known these people for 20 years but we never really played together we've been in different bands everything worked out really good and i've got uh everyone's very experienced and uh totally into it and we're just having a blast is loaded with great bands and we chose Occam's Razor for our featured band on their inaugural episode of Next Stop Seattle. All along there is somebody else She's always there to crunch my need no thought for herself She had met my heart system flame The stinging velvet touch with cold whiskey jam How much longer can I take this hunger in my head? As long as it takes till I can get cold whiskey in my bed. She is always waiting, just one step around the bed. She's so intoxicating, she's my addiction and best friend. All along there is somebody else. She's always there to quench my need, don't no thought for herself. She can bet my heart system flame, the stinging velvet touch, cold whiskey jane. And you're switching instruments all the time, Chris. Well, so actually, so do these two. It's just we're, we're, we're very simplified at the moment. Um, but Tom plays mandolin and banjo as well as guitar. And you look the part. You look like a band straight out of Dublin. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> the leprechaun with the thyroid problem. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let's talk about your music because it is fun. The crowd was going crazy. Your music is a blast. Thank you. Is it fun to play? Absolutely. It's always fun for me to play because it's music that I grew up listening to. Touch 
Chris, I have a question for you. Uh -oh. This, did it hurt? <laughs> um, not, as, not as badly as some of the other ones. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask you to show. Let's talk it's about your... It's all about the neck. It's all about the neck. No, it's all about the neck. Yeah, and here's the... Okay, well, we'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> we might go deeper in there in a minute. We're in Seattle. Yes. What are your favorite things about Seattle? The people. Um, the climate. I don't care that it rains all winter long. The summers here are phenomenal. It, you get like 90 degree weather for a week, and then you're right back to 70s. Uh, there's such a, a love of music here. So as a musician, you, you, you really feel appreciated and respected here. Whiskey Jam. We're at Nana's Irish Pub in the Nye Beach District to feature Mistral, an authentic Irish band with a Britney flair. Your band looks like you guys are all having a fun. You look like you get along. Your instrumentation is awesome. Tell us about your band and, tell, and the people that are in it. Uh, we're called Mistral, and we take our name from a powerful wind that blows out of the northwest of France. Um, Elizabeth and I started it. We were playing music for uh, English dancing uh, here in Oregon and discovered that we both had this love of Breton folk music. This is the first time we've ever had somebody featuring music from Britain. So this is kind of cool for us. This is kind of unique. And speaking of unique, this Irish pub, is this not authentic? Do you not feel like you could be in Dublin right now? I'm there. Yeah, I'm there. You it's got all, your Guinness it's in It's all man? the Guinness and the people raising it every time we play. Uh, you've raised it a little bit too much, though, because look, empty. he doesn't have any Guinness in the glass <laughs> right now. The New York Times calls his music dazzling. Next Stop calls it mesmerizing. And Makana and your and your band, you're an amazing gift to Hawaiian music. Thank Thanks you for brother. joining us. Right on. Next Stop, Oahu. This is probably the most special music segment we've ever done because we're in your we're in your home. We are, and you know Hawaiian music comes out of the home. Hawaiian music is a very personal thing, 
And when the missionaries arrived back in the 1800s, a lot of what was culturally Hawaiian was outlawed. And a lot of the uh, cultural practices kind of went underground. So Hawaiian music, including the style that I am versed in, which is called Kiho Alu, or Hawaiian slack key guitar, kind of went underground and became very personal, was only played in the home. So we wanted to share Hawaiian music in the context that it was created. In Hawaii, we talk story, right? That's and you right. talk story through your music. What's the source of it? Besides the ancestors, what's the source of your music today? The sense of place. It comes down to that. When you aloha someone, it's an action, it's a verb, it's not a noun, it's a verb. You aloha, I aloha you. I aloha you means I recognize that whatever's lighting you up and making you alive is the same thing that's lighting me up and making me alive. And I celebrate that. And we are ohana, we are family. And so let's work together and to create harmony. That's aloha. So we mentioned in the intro of the show that the uh, wine scene's blowing up here, which means arts and culture follow. The music scene here is actually blowing up as well. We got Robin here with Coyote Kings, who's going to be our music segment tonight. We actually put our first band together in Walla Walla in 1977. I know I don't look that old. But you were, were you two? Close. <laughs> You're too kind. But let's look at your shoes, though, man. I love your, I love your, I love your duds. Look at this guy. He's dressed. He's dressed for the part tonight. Baby, call me on the phone. She got a little something, something on her mind. Yeah. Yeah, she call me on the phone. She got a little something, something on her mind. I got to leave right now before I get left behind. Tell us about your music. Well, uh, we like, we call it rock and blues and and bluesy rock, smoking hot, and uh, so uh, we kind of mix uh, everything from a uh, uh, little bit of funk, a little bit of uh, classic R and B thrown in. Place. What do you love most about Walla Walla? Uh, it's quiet, but it's starting to get so much more to do. All week, there's music someplace, and on the weekends, there's music all over the place.
San Diego's famed Gaslamp District is a 16-block area, equal parts stately and fun-loving. The district, which gets its name from gaslit street lamps along Fifth Avenue, has gone through many incarnations. Today you'll find numerous restaurants ranging from burger joints to four-star Italian bistros and much more. Numerous wine bars and nightclubs bring this district to life at night and give it a vibrant pulse. If you're looking for action in San Diego, the Gaslamp District is where it's at. Tell me, woman, how did you ever pick me? I, I was sitting here drinking and drowning out some old memories. And was you and I, woman, we was all wrapped up in, and girl, we were feeling okay, Lord. But for the life of me, baby, I can't. Our musical guest on Next Stop San Diego is Len Rainey and his Midnight Players. The band's been with me now for about 20 years. The band, some of the same guys have been with me for 20 years. And we played all over the world. We just got back from Japan. We, uh, we just got back from Chicago. So I've been on the road for about three weeks. I haven't seen a bed, a real nice bed in about three weeks. So and this is I'm home for you. This is home for me. This is home for me. What do you yeah. love about San Diego? San Diego, the weather. I mean, if you you have to pay for the weather here, but the weather is fantastic. And well, you've got so many great things to see here too. I mean, you got the zoo, you got uh, Sea World, and all the rest of the things too. Was it Mary Lou, Peggy Sue, Betty Lou, or just plain Jane? For the life of that woman, I can't remember your name. I can't remember. How do you describe your music? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a mix. It's a lot of original stuff, a lot of rhythm and blues. Um, it comes from a lot of different angles. I'm, I'm an old rock and roll bass player, but I used to like a lot of um, soul and blues, so kind of mixed it up together. I used to call it jazz rock, soul, folk, folk funk is what we used to call it. So it's a mixture of everything. Did you, did you see Anchorman? I seen a little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah, so Ron Burgundy was the, was the Will Ferrell character, right? He used to be here. He yes. signed off every newscast every night with a message to San Diego. We want you to sign off with that message tonight. Oh, stay classy, San Diego. Okay. Is that it? Say this to our viewers. Stay classy, San Diego. Oh, stay classy next stop. That's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> you better love somebody, woman, and I hope somebody loves you. For our local Sun Valley music segment, we're at Whiskey Jack's in downtown Ketchum. Now, I've been here before, and the place did not look like this last time I was here. We had a catastrophic fire burning the ground. Our boss, bless her heart, decided to rebuild and built this beautiful new bar. We got full game room in the back. We got eight high-def TVs. This is one of our popular sandwiches, a grinder, served with onion rings. Our most popular item are our spicy bourbon chicken wings. I'm digging into that. Excellent, good. Fried, finish them off on the grill, sweet, tangy sauce. Yum. And then, of course, our world-famous pizza. Now, right now, we got a bunch of people dining here. Mm -hmm. This is going to be page here in a few minutes, right? Yeah, it's, we go from a family-friendly pizza establishment to a rockin' nightclub. So. And our band tonight, tell us about these guys. We have Jonathan Warren and the Billy Goats. They come from Boise, Idaho. They are a mix of bluegrass and rockabilly, but they, they got their own little pizzazz they bring to the stage. They call it progressive psychobilly. <laughs> It's, it's bluegrass with a little edgier edge. So they got a lot of stringed instruments, but they have percussions, and they, they, they got a lot of foot stomping too. Sounds fun. It's, go, it's good old hoot nanny with these guys.
king in Chicago. We are at one of the best places to see the blues live, the only way to see the blues, Buddy Guy. I'm very pleased and honored to welcome a true Chicago blues, kind of a legend from what I'm reading about you. Thank you. Man. Let's talk about the Chicago blues. Okay. Take us back. I mean, why, why, why is Chicago such a deep-rooted blues town? I think because it's a combination of so many different types of music and styles from the South that came up here and just kind of percolate like a good gumbo, you know, and it just all mixed together. And it came out to be in Chicago blues, you know, it, it, it you know, got electrified here. station that we had, we only had one, per se, black radio station here in Chicago, WBON, and uh, they played everything. They had a DJ for gospel, a DJ for, you know, R&D, and a DJ for blues, and Purvis fan, all night blues man. And I used to sneak up with my little uh, transistor radio, yes, transistor radio, <laughs> <laughs> and hold it up to my ear, and I used to listen to those guys. I didn't know it was called blues, I just know I liked it. Party going on over here. Hey, y'all, party going on over here. Don't eat colored greens, drink moonshine and beer. Y'all say it with me. It's a party over here. Party over here. Party over here. Party over here. 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 Walking in here tonight, I just felt like legends have walked this room. This is a good place to play. But he cares about the music. He has good performers here, and he got the staff that knows how to, you know, handle the business and stuff. And so it's there's some other clubs that I like, but this is by far my favorite, buddy guy. Southern Hospitality is alive and well in the Adams Morgan District of D.C. at Madams Oregon. It's just a goofy play on the neighborhood, you know? Uh, Adams Morgan, Madams Oregon. I mean, I'm not exactly a rocket scientist here, you know? <laughs> I love it. You've had it for 20 years. You guys are celebrating your 20 year anniversary. 20 years this year. next month. And in fact, the guy you've got playing was the first band I hired 20 years ago, Bobby Parker. Let's talk about Bobby Parker. He's, this guy's a legend around here. Bobby's, he's not just a legend here. I mean, I literally, I had. Uh, Steve Winwood and, and Tom Petty call me, bring him out to meet them at a show. Uh, he's the only guy that the Beatles admit to stealing from. Love it. Led Zeppelin, note for note, Moby Dick. I mean, over the years he's played, starting in 57, you know, this guy's been playing nonstop. <laughs> You know, Washington's a town that, you know, not much is real. And uh, there's so much acrimony politically, etc. I will tell you that when they come in here, Democrats, Republicans, ambassadors, you know, we've had heads of state in here. There are no arguments about politics. The music unites everybody. I can tell. And that. it's just, uh, it's the kind of place, you know, that they said, Washington, a town where not much is real, this place is real. When I pulled up tonight and I saw the sign, sorry, we're open. Pretty I much I, says it all. I knew it. <laughs> It does say it all. This place is very tongue-in-cheek. You guys are all about humor, good times, good music, good food, just bringing people together.
What happened with the Beatles? McCartney was a good friend of mine. He still is. He you know. stole your riff, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, I know I'm you glad know. you said it. <laughs> What's the riff? It's What's good. the song? Uh, I feel fine. What's the best memory for you? Um, the Apollo days uh, with uh, uh, all the original artists. Lil Anthony, the Imperials, uh, Frankie Lyman, uh, Frankie Avalon. So how do you keep it going? I mean, here we are. I'm not going to tell your age. We discussed this. <laughs> but you're still bringing it. Your first kid was before I was born. How do you keep relevant? How do you keep the energy? I love the music, man. And people make me happy out there. Let me hear you say yes. Yeah. <laughs> David Wayne is our featured musician on our Palm Springs episode, and this guy was born with a guitar in hand, and he never right. left school. Still here. How did you get started? <laughs> well, I was a kid just listening to the music on the radio, and uh, my, my dad was musical, and kind of just kind of grew from there, just the love of music from day one, all different styles, and uh, took lessons for a few years when I was younger, and then it's, it's just kind of taken off on my own now. this flamenco Spanish guitar stuff. I just love it. How did you migrate towards that? Um, it's kind of a kind of an assimilation of all the styles that I like growing up. You know, I listened to a rock, I listened to jazz, I listened to classical, and I got into Latin jazz and all that. And I kind of put it all together. But the guitar I play is a flamenco guitar. I don't I don't necessarily play traditional flamenco, but that gives it that sound, you know what I mean? Even if I'm playing a different style it still has kind of has a flamenco sound. I've got an 11 year old at home who's just starting to pick up guitar. What advice would you give him? Always believe that, that anything's possible. Never think that you have limitations and you'll get better and better. live music scene in Orlando, we're at the Orlando Brewing Establishment, which is my new favorite haunt. This place is awesome, John. I well, love it, man. You. Thanks for having us. <laughs> no, thank you. Now, I love three things about this place. I love the beer. I love all the stuff on the wall. But I especially love the big American flag. What's up with that? That was the uh, flag that was used to uh, for the opening ceremonies of our theater downtown the big high rise and everything and when they were done with the ceremony they decided they were going to throw the flag away well the, uh, the 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 foreman of the job said no 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 i've got a friend of mine he knows what to do with it and uh, so he brought it down here and we hung it up on the wall that's fantastic so it's been flown once only once perfect <laughs> and now it stays on your wall proudly. forever and ever everything else on your wall though you got some crazy signs up there what's your favorite one um, I think that uh, the reason I get up every morning, beer. That one? Yeah. <laughs> every uh, afternoon? Every the afternoon. The reason I get up every afternoon is yep. beer? Yep. <laughs> I like that too. Let's talk about your beer because it's uh, it's really good. It's also one of the few true organic breweries. Uh, we're a one out of ten in the uh, either the United States or the world. There are uh, the three What's beers that here? we have. That is the Eminent Domain. That's a very malty, uh, very malty beer. Then we have the uh, the blonde. The blonde is our most uh, popular beer. It's uh, very light. It's about uh, four or so, four and a half percent uh, alcohol. I can see and, why. Uh, now this one, I love the name. Uh, that's Hopgasmic. Hopgasmic. 
That was the uh, that was the end of the year beer. We uh, we we uh, converted to uh, from non-organic hops to organic hops. I like this. So beer that's a lot. our last beer that we made with uh, non-organic hops. Everything that we make now is totally 100% organic. So you guys feature live music. Yes, we do. I like music. I, I really enjoy uh, music. We're the original original music venue. I like it. In no. Orlando. Well, and that goes basically perfect with the band tonight, Sailor 1942. Sure. Yes. Their music is old school, but they're young kids. They're, um, they have a very unique uh, way of looking at the world. They're kind of uh, what you would have expected in the Bob Dylan age of, of folk. All the birds, all the melodies I've heard are humming yours. Collecting moss and some twigs, and now we have a place to live. Emptiness, no regrets, and where we hold no loneliness. Cause out of all the birds, all the melodies I've heard, I keep humming yours. Shake it for your chords. All the birds, all the melodies I've heard, I keep humming yours. Shake it for your chords. Do you ever get up and sing with the bands? Um, one time. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's on YouTube. <laughs> I'm gonna look for that. I'm definitely gonna look for that. I told you you got nothing to be sorry for. You're scratching deep if you're keeping score. Cause I gotta win, gotta win, gotta win, gotta win this war. You've seen her on The Voice. She's been compared to Janis Joplin tonight. We're so honored to have you on our show. Whitney Thank Meyer you. joins us. You you grew up with this. You grew up with I music did. in your soul. It was a family. It's still a family affair. My dad plays guitar. He taught me how to write songs. We started writing songs together when I was 14. My uncle plays the drums. My mom is also a musician, guitar and keyboard. So when you were just a wee little girl, did you think you'd yeah. be sitting here tonight? Did you think you would have the voice experience? Did you think this would all happen? Um, no, I, I definitely hoped it would from the time I was five. I wanted to be on stage. I remember bugging my dad. My dad was playing shows and I remember going, Dad, can I get on the microphone? And I didn't, I don't think I knew what I was doing. I wasn't like Christina Aguilera, a child prodigy, but, but I, you know, I, I had a desire for it. And so I just, I practiced and I worked at it and I, and I think being surrounded by it increased whatever natural ability I may have had at a young age. I will never be shrouded in mystery, knuckles white. To make sure you're looking right I'm sorry I can't see the way to be the throbbing organ With one eye cracked open To make sure me still sure Somebody's watching You wanna feel the screams and the breathing watching the voice episode with my family, my Ohana back in Hawaii, and you were one of the few musicians that got all four chairs turned around. And it's one of the few shows I really do enjoy. What was that like? For lack of a more descriptive adjective, 
it was crazy. Like it was, it was awesome because it was a last minute decision that I that I made to go audition for The Voice. How has it changed your direction and where you're going now? Doing The Voice gave me the confidence to be a solo artist and to kind of step away from my family band, the com my comfort blanket as I like to call them, and be be my own person and an individual. And I'm so thankful for that. Your dad's here tonight. He must be so proud of you. I love my dad. My dad is a good man. He he pushed me a lot when I was younger, and I remember like being a little resentful of that at some point in my teenage years, but it has, I thank him for it now, and I remember him saying, you'll thank me for it later, and I was thinking, nah, -uh, no, I won't. Our parents but always say those things, and do. we always say, they do. Yeah. darn it, you're right. Yeah. Musician is Wolf Hamlin. You saw him on American Idol. You now see him on Next Stop. Wolf, welcome. Thank you. Let's talk about American Idol. That had to be just an incredible experience for you. It was. It was incredible. A lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah. Uh, you the TV biz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you go. Oh, we're gonna. I'm up. No, I'm not. I gotta wait seven more hours. So that's kind of it. It definitely racks your brain because you're, now you're just you're, you can gain more and more and more nervousness as the day goes on. You have a very eclectic band. Very much so. Businessmen, teachers, yes. winemakers. I got Talk about all. your band. So uh, I got my, my lead guitarist, the teacher, he's a geology teacher. My other guitar player, Carl, is a winemaker for a local vineyard that's been around for 100 plus years. My fiance is one of the fiddle players. I'm lucky uh, she hasn't, she, she said yes and I didn't have to pay a dime. <laughs> Worked out well, good. you did though. You had to buy a ring. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about like actual, like under the table, please, just so my mom's <laughs> happy. You know how it goes. And I said, no, ma'am, just get together on the run. Just get together on the run. Go, ma'am, get together on the run. Your fans love you. It's fun. Yeah, you it's guys fun. have such a thumping energy. It is fun. Uh, you know, and it's. You feed off of that. When when people are getting excited, you can see the excitement in their face. That just makes you want more, and you want, makes you want to give them an awesome experience. The only thing that's worth anything is life. Is, in this life, is friends, music, good people, good times. Like just just relax and, and do it. Just get stuck in the wrong run. Just get stuck in the wrong run. Go man. Get stuck in the wrong run. I got some time of this for a little fun. I got some time of this for a little fun. I got a little time of this for a little fun. Thank you. Cook is our featured musician on Next Stop Central Oregon, and he is cooking up 
some serious tunes tonight at the Silver Moon Brewing Company right here in downtown Bend. And you and your wife and your baby girl are living the dream, my brother. We're living our dream. Um, it's not everybody's dream, but yeah, we get to uh, drive all over the country playing music, taking pictures, and raising our daughter. So you had, you had a really killer place in Temecula. You dumped that a few weeks ago, you bought an RV, and that's how you guys are living. That's what I mean living. That's our home, home on wheels, yeah. Well, has it been fun? It's been a blast. And, uh, you know, people, especially considering Jolene, our little baby, like, oh, she must be so confined, but we pull up at parks and let her crawl around. And I think, you know, uh, it might sound kind of cheesy, but the world is our oyster. On the road, and we'll keep on driving. Take a truck stop for the night Feel my pulse With your head at my chest Tell me everything is fine And thank the Lord Cause we ditched the devil Left them 3,000 miles behind Then we can't know for sure How this journey will unfold So we show up at these places with contentment on our faces we can hope for the best but i know we will be tested there's no promise of success so remember that we're blessed just as we are just as we are so where did you get this soulful disposition in music, man. You just bring it. You've got such an energy on stage. Um, it's really due to my parents' uh, preference in music, listening to Motown a lot. And, I mean, everything from, you know, Motown to Led Zeppelin and Creedence Clearwater Revival. And, and then my mom was really into more the jazzy, you know, Nat King Cole or the Rat Pack guys. What do you think of Bend? This is your first time to Bend, Oregon. You like Central Oregon? Everybody that we've met is super sweet. Um, any questions we have, they they want to sit down and not just tell us in passing, but actually like, oh, well, let me tell you my favorite thing to do. And um, everybody's been so so great and welcoming. So we're gonna be back. We're gonna make this an annual annual stop for sure. Through the darkest of days, let your light fall at my feet. Well, I thank God for this very day The life I live is a gift to me I don't intend to waste it 